So thank you very much, Dr. Ross Russell, for doing those mock interviews with us. I just had a few more questions that we normally get on our videos uh, yeah. from prospective students. So obviously, I know that Peter's is probably the best college in Cambridge. I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the best things about studying medicine at Peterhouse? Oh, so uh, Peterhouse is a lovely college. When I'm asked about how to choose um, colleges, I think there are probably three things uh, that you need to think about. One is size. Mm -hmm. So there are big colleges, there are small colleges, yeah. and there are advantages and disadvantages to both. So if you want to take part in a really super duper college orchestra or <laughs> college boat club or whatever else it might be, the bigger the college, the likelihood is there's going to be more people who, who do that sort of thing. So the big colleges um, have that sort of advantage, but the small colleges you get to know people, and particularly you get to know people outside medicine a bit more. So size is the first thing I would uh, get people to look at. The second is location. So again, there are some central uh, colleges, there are some colleges like this that are very close to the downing site. If you want to tip out of bed at five past nine and still be in the lecture, why well, at least five past nine? Then you know, then you want to you want somewhere that's close to whatever it is that you study. On the other hand, you, you know, some people like to be away a little bit, a little bit separate, and so the the other colleges uh, that are a bit more outside uh, and a little bit further away, and that can be an advantage to people. So location is perhaps the second thing. The, the third thing, which I think is probably the most difficult is what's different in terms of how they teach medicine or any other subject and, and that's down to the DOS I guess the yeah. director of studies so there is a you know all of the colleges are lovely they're all fantastic yeah. you, you know you get a you get a wonderful um, training in all of them but there are sometimes slightly different emphases between them mm -hmm. and so some you know I'm a clinician I've been working as a pediatrician for a Hundred years after that book, so so they get a fairly clinical based supervision. Mm -hmm. But there's other super director studies who are very scientific, and they'll get a slightly more sciencey one. Mm -hmm. It's much more difficult to really pin that down before you get there. Yeah. But that's perhaps the third element. And you mentioned supervisions. Can you tell us a bit more about what a supervision is? Yeah. Or what it entails? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you come to <laughs> yeah. um, so, no supervision is is a they are intended to be an opportunity for me to meet with a small group of people. I do the physiology supervisions outside the lecture course. So you should learn your core material. All the exam material is taught in the lectures and in the practicals that you get uh, uh, on site uh, there. However, exploring things over and beyond in small groups is what the supervisions are. So we, you get an hour a week uh, in each of your three major subjects in the first year, anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, you get an hour with a different supervisor uh, in groups of usually two or three and you can talk about things in more detail and you can discuss things. We do go over uh, course material, um, but it's better if we explore things outside the course material. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of information out there about what makes a good doctor, the characteristics of someone who's applying to medicine. Are there any specific things that you're looking for in an interview at Peterhouse? Uh, that's a really good question, and, and I think it's quite a difficult one. Um, th th there are a number of sources uh, where you can look up what is thought to constitute a good doctor. So yes. the GMC have got some very good guidelines, uh, and one of the other very well-known groups is the Canadian Medical Society, CanMeds, and they, they both generally break it down into around six characteristics. Right. So th there's a core knowledge uh, that you need to know. There's ethics, so uh, you, you need to have some sort of ethical framework. Mm -hmm. um, what else is there? There is, uh, there is data handling, so you know, uh, problem solving data handling. Uh, there is numeracy, just you know, numbers. Mm -hmm. um, there's communication, yeah. um, and there's another one which I'm trying to think about. Um, uh, a research, so we, we, you know, we, we want you to have an understanding of research and, and, and some statistical sort of understanding. Now those, those areas are important to be a good doctor, so when we're doing questions we try to, to drive questions around those areas so we can okay. get a sense of what it is. So in, in the example we did today, I gave a case study of a, of a, a Sudanese woman. We happened to choose on some of the ethical uh, issues and yeah. communication issues, um, but we might easily have looked at data interpretation. We might easily have looked at other aspects yeah. of that. So we try to develop 
storylines or cases or scenarios where we can choose to pick. And if we have two interview groups, which we tend to, and most colleges do, uh, then we will say between the groups, could you focus on the ethics and the communication and the research oh, and we'll focus on this, this and this, yeah. so that we make sure that over the time that they're interviewed, they get a little bit of questioning in each of those areas. Oh, right, okay. Fine, fine. And um, in the actual interviews themselves, how much should students worry about getting everything correct? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, they shouldn't. Um, uh, and it was nice to hear them talk about uh, their tips because I yeah. thought both of them gave, gave, gave really good tips. It is a conversation. It is a mm. conversation between them and us. And uh, as Nua said, if, if I ask questions that the, the, the candidate clearly knows the answer to, we'll, we'll just explore a bit further yeah. until they don't. And, and it's, a lot of it is about trying to see how people think and how they problem solve and how they deal with new information which is about teachability in a way, I suppose. Yeah. So I want to know if I feed you some information about a growth chart that you can incorporate that and say, oh yeah, okay, okay. well in that case, what yeah. about this? So that we, we are having a proper conversation. Right. So how to apply that knowledge. How to apply the knowledge. But I will be pushing to find out just how far <laughs> I can take you. When I get to the point that I don't know anymore, then that, that's fine. That's I'll, stop, I'll stop there. <laughs> okay. And are there any characteristics that makes applicants stand out perhaps not just in the interview, but throughout the application process um, that you've come across over the years? I think one of the things that, that helps, uh, I don't know about stand out, but one of the things that helps is enthusiasm and enjoyment. I, yeah. mean, it, it, I know it's stressful, and we try our very best to make it less, <laughs> less stressful. It is stressful, but candidates who come in and, and are clearly enjoying it and, mm. and are engaging with it yeah. are going to come over better yeah. than if, if if you just get too worried about saying the wrong thing, it, oh, it, it, it's much better to, to, to try and learn and to try and enjoy it. So it, it's difficult because it's not easy to do. But I think that, that entering into it, having fun as much as you can in that situation, but, but looking as though you're enjoying <laughs> it, is probably a good tip. It's smiling. Smiling, yeah. smiling a lot. <laughs> And I understand the BMAT is not going to continue the next. No, year. they've changed across to uh, a, a new assessment system, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's not entirely clear to me at the moment exactly okay. where we're we're going to finish up. But there is a new assessment system. There is likely to be an assessment system, okay. a bit like the BMAT, and we use the BMAT um, to some extent. Mm -hmm. Some colleges are more dependent on dependent on uh, put more weight on the BMAT scores than other colleges. We tend to be slightly less than uh, probably the average. Um, it's important to me as a sort of dividing line when I've got two candidates who yeah. are uh, of equal stature, then I'll start to look at other features. Yeah. But for me, um, the, the, the core knowledge, their exam results, the interview um, is uh, weighs really importantly with me. I need the BMAT to be decent because yeah. I need to know they can cope with the, the course here. But it's it's not much beyond that until we get to the real until we get to squeaky bums <laughs> and where we <laughs> got to pick between yeah. two candidates. Fine, fine. And just talking more about sort of the candidates that apply, can you tell us a bit more about the pool or what it means to be placed in this pool? Yeah, so that there are various pools. There's there's um, there's a winter pool and then there's actually two summer pools, although one of them is becoming less relevant. Mm -hmm. So what happens in the first in the winter pool is that immediately after the interviews. Each college has a certain number of places in medicine, mm -hmm. so we've got seven, um, and we are allowed to make uh, currently seven offers. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are asked to do is to put the bottom two or three of those seven, mm -hmm. uh, and the top two or three, in other words, eight, nine, and ten, mm -hmm. of the people who didn't get it, into the pool. So okay. we, we ideally put five or six of the borderline counts in the pool, and the idea is that I then go and I look and I see what other colleges have had in their borderline to see whether or not my borderline candidates are better or worse than the ones in elsewhere. Okay. And I can then either take that candidate back that okay. I put in the pool, okay. or I can bid for one of the other candidates that uh, the colleges have left in the pool. And it's quite a tricky process to, to know what to do. So, but that, that, so there's a, 
that's really to try and adjust between colleges and we talk to each other so I might say we've had a fantastically strong year this year you know you should look at ours okay. uh, in other years other people say the same and, and we might not have such a strong uh, group so that's the winter pool the summer pool in recent years they've had a thing called the adjustment pool which I think has been a, a great success um, now candidates are probably aware that there are flags that are put on certain candidates depending on the, the deprivation flags of, of various sorts. There's about okay. five which are to do with things like free school meals. Okay. Uh, if you are eligible for free school meals, that's, that's a flag. If you come from a school that has uh, uh, low uh, results or low Oxbridge places, there are a variety of flags mm. of a slightly different sort of strength okay. that, that are attached to candidates and, and we get these flags. Now, if candidates with flags are invited up for interview, whether or not they get put in the pool or get an offer, if they subsequently make the A star, A star, A standard offer, yeah. they get contacted and invited to whether, as to whether or not they wish to be reconsidered. Oh, right, okay. So what happens in the summer is that there is a group of students who are not offered places, who have got flags, yeah. and who have got A star, A star, A. Yeah. And those go into an adjustment pool. So if I've made seven offers, mm -hmm. I've got six candidates get their offer, I've got one spare place, I can go to the adjustment pool I and I can look through the candidates who've got flags to see whether there's someone I feel would, would work for me. And again, there's a competitive bidding between colleges for the, the candidates there. I think that's a great scheme. Yeah. There is a separate summer pool which is uh, anyone who has just got or just not got, just not been offered a place, but it's felt to be very close. Mm -hmm. And those candidates are also considered, and there's, there's an amalgamation of the two. So, so there's, there's both the adjustment candidates and the other, and we, and we can look at both of those. I see. Okay. So just a couple more questions. With the weighting of the personal statements, the grades, the interview, how do you look at that to decide on your, of the candidates you give offers to? I think it's very difficult. Um, we've got online interviews and mm. we've got face-to-face -face interviews. Yes. And what's quite clear in Cambridge is we can't quite make our mind up as a university or as a faculty as to what we want to do, so that some colleges will be doing face-to-face, -face, some will be doing online, um, and that will be true in medicine and in other subjects. So the, 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 there are going to be differences in the way we do it. I've done both. I think they're both good. Yeah. I don't think that, I don't there's any evidence that one is sufficiently better than the other that we ought to be doing one over the other they but they probably I don't know how different they would be we've made them the same as we possibly can yeah um, I just don't know whether we choose the same candidates with each of that process as I we see. would but I, I don't think that means that one is better or worse it simply means so the whole question of interviewing we know is flawed in so many ways there are other ways of doing it. There's, some groups use multiple mini interviews. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that uh, we, we use interviews mm -hmm. and we put, Peter has put quite a lot of weight on the interviews, okay. accepting that that's not ideal. Yeah. So I would have said that your academic record mm -hmm. uh, results, um, interview um, are the key ones. Okay. Behind that sits BMAT. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and less exciting for me is your personal statement. I see, okay. <laughs> and, and, and that's less exciting to me because because my job is, is to level a playing field that's very difficult mm. to level. So I've got yeah. candidates from all sorts of backgrounds and schools and all sorts applying and I want the best medic. And so I need to try and level it off as best I can. And yeah. the trouble with personal statements is that often not written by the person who's <laughs> they're right, person. They're written by the school or they're written by their medical parents or they're written by other people for other, for, and for some it is written by them and so personal statements aren't mm. terribly so I, I tend to be quite wary of personal statements okay. I find it interesting it's nice to make a report it's nice yeah. to have a, a, a but it, it, it isn't the basis on which I would choose candidates okay fair enough and lastly we've heard from the two candidates that tips for preparing for interviews do you have any tips for <laughs> preparing for the interview <laughs> for those applying here? Um, I thought Druval's tip of, of doing something into camera was, was, was quite yeah, sensible, good, actually. Yeah. I thought that was good. Um, and and practising that, that business mm -hmm. and looking at yourself speak and, and realising you're speaking too quickly and, that's, and, and, yeah. you know, and you've got to slow it down. 
all those things are good and yeah. the eye contact so I, I like that tip I thought that was that was particularly helpful they're, they're stressful so I suppose my tip would be try and get someone to quiz you yes you know okay. try to get someone to put you on the spot and to, to grill you and to feel uncomfortable and get them to do it in a jacket and tie if that's what you're into yeah. or, you know, and, it, and in a formal setting not, yeah. not casually over supper you know actually sit them down it's a bit like doing those mock exams if you sit True. down you know, at a desk <laughs> with the lights on and the timer going, it's different than if you're just flicking through and trying That's to see through the questions. No. So those are the tips. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Oh, it's lovely to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Nice to, nice to be back. Thank you.